Hey folks, Technivers here. Today in this video, we're going to go over a Kodak PLA. That's right, Kodak. They make 3D printing filaments, and Kodak's been in the printing game for a long time. So, uh, obviously, their filaments are definitely worth a look, and they were kind enough to send me a spool of PLA, an ABS, and two PETG. Now, if you look here, you can see their beautiful translucent yellow PETG. We will go over this and the purple they sent me in another review video. For right now, what we're gonna focus on is this beautiful silver right here. So let me show you a little bit more about this guy. They have some really nice packaging. I just wanted to show you this real quick. It is super well sealed, very clearly labeled, very nice packaging. If you look on the box, it does have the recommended printing temperatures, the weight, the diameter, and things of that nature. It also has this special color code, uh, silver 427 CP. This is PLA, and we're gonna... I just made a huge mistake. Uh, a simple mistake when you're excited and you're trying to get your filament out, take a look at it really quickly, is to not properly examine the packaging that it comes in. And in doing that, I missed something that is actually really awesome on the part of Kodak. Now, as you can see here, I have another spool, and this time I'm gonna open it properly to show you the right way to do this. So, um, basically, this is a resealable bag. It comes with desiccant in it, so if you open it properly, you can put the spool back in there and store it indefinitely in a pretty much controlled environment in there. So, what you need to do is find the slot on the side here, just like you're opening a uh, bag of cereal or something like that and go ahead and just rip the top and once you've done that you'll see the zipper there that i missed the first time so um this way and this is the abs this is a nice black abs they sent me you can see the desk kit there uh, we're gonna go ahead and place that back in the bag but it is resealable and because of the foil nature of the bag you can actually almost press all of the air out of it uh, by hand so you get a really well sealed and easily storable partially used package and you do want to make sure that the zipper is fully zipped but as you can see it is pretty close to airtight in there I do have the desk in there and now this is properly stored so don't stab your package with scissors when you get the Kodak filament it is not just a plastic wrapper it is also a reusable storage container and they come in really handy because even after this spool is gone, I can slide another spool in here. So having a bunch of these around is going to be a plus, definitely. Open it up, nice kiss there from the package releasing. You can see we've got a very well handled spool. It's pretty pretty well round, wound, a um, couple spots in there, um, but I did double check it and make sure it didn't cross over anywhere and they did tuck the end really nicely down in here. As you can see, I have this running at the moment on my TiVo Tarantula Pro. Now, a couple of these models were done on my Ender 3, and other than that, I've pretty much just used it on these two printers. They're pretty similar in build, both Cartesian design, um, and both very, very similar in size, other than the modification for the height on the Ender 3. So, uh, I've had good luck printing with both of them, with both filaments. I've since switched the Ender 3 to be printing the PETG. I have some things to show you that I've printed with that that I think are pretty cool. But for right now, we're focusing on this guy right here. And as you can see, it is putting down a nice, smooth raft layer right there because we're going to print another large piece of chainmail. I do have one printed already. It came out really nice, and I'll show you that in just a second. But the first model I actually printed was the little piece of chainmail. Now, this was a test print for this particular piece of printable fabric and I printed this piece on my Ender 3. Now the Ender 3 has a PEI bed, this one that I'm using, so uh, I get really really good adhesion. When I moved over to the TiVo Tarantula Pro, the adhesion is almost too good because it's a build tack surface, so for these tiny little pieces I didn't really feel like prying on the individual corners where it attached to the bed with a knife and I had chosen to put down a raft down below them so that I can remove that from the bed in one piece and then slowly pry away the actual chain mail itself. And in that process, I came out with this. So this actually came out really, really well. Uh, the dimensional accuracy of this Kodak filament is pretty, pretty high. 
I like the way that it goes down. The layers all came out nice and smooth. And as you can see, I've gotten successful chainmail off of two different printers. Um, this is one of the tougher things to dial in your settings and print. This is printed as basically a shell with no infill. And I will get you a close up picture and put it up here. And as you can see, looking at this picture in these holes here, uh, that's basically the perimeter wall. And it does build up from the bottom, which has similar uh, gaps, I guess you'd say, between the walls. There's no infill in this model at all. It's basically putting down uh, an H and then building up bars and then turning the H sideways and printing it uh, the other way on top in order to create this beautiful, beautiful interlaced pattern that we get. So I do have a couple other models to show you. One is the TKNBRS, the 923. Now this is a model that I just put on Thingiverse. It is a Mandalorian blaster. I modeled this in Fusion 360 and I am very, very happy with how this has come out so far. I do plan to install a potentiometer here and there are a couple places where I will be placing screws, including in the uh, handle here, as well as one right here. Those things aren't functional. They're basically to add a little bit more dimension and effect to the look of the model itself. But I am pretty pleased with how this came out. Uh, I painted mine with a metallic paint and then did some gold accents. Not quite sure what I'm going to paint this yet. I've left that bare. That is the color of this Kodak filament, and it is pretty smooth. I sanded everything down. I can show you a couple pictures here uh, and here. This is a before and after of the sanding, uh, basically right after printing and removing the tree supports, and then uh, after a little bit of sanding. And then this is, as you can see, after a couple of coats of paint. Still not completely finished with this, but you will see the final model when we do the finishing of the Mandalorian build, which we are still working on. You hear me talk about it from time to time. I show you a piece here or there. Uh, I think it's going to all come together really, really nicely. And I am getting to work on the uh, Mandalorian rifle as soon as we finish up the minor tweaks we're doing on this guy here. So uh, that was all printed in Kodak PLA as well, printed in a single piece. It prints in an orientation where the hilt is on the bed. And as you can see, uh, it pretty much fits on there pretty well. It will print on any 230, 230 by 250 build surface. Uh, this is actually a 75% scale of the actual model I made. I made it slightly large because you don't lose resolution when scaling down. So um, that allowed me to get a couple more of the finer details in there that I wanted when scaling down in Kira and not lose um, any of the round curves or anything like that. I didn't want it to come out low poly. So uh, yeah, very happy with that. Very happy all in all with all of the Kodak stuff that I have printed. And I will leave you with the last PLA print that I printed with the Kodak PLA so far. And that is this guy. This is a lithophane and it is really hard to see what it is a picture of right now. So let me hit the lights and we'll take a closer look at this bad boy. And here we have it, a close-up view of that lithophane. And as you can see, we will zoom out a little bit here. It came out very, very well. Now, the resolution of this lithophane that you're seeing now is slightly skewed by the resolution of my camera. If I were to take a picture, uh, it also wouldn't do it justice because of the flash on my camera. So. Uh, the detail in this, as we zoomed out, you can see those tiny little lines above the shoulder of my late father-in-law here are actually CDs because this picture is pretty old. And you can see next to that a full-size poster-sized picture of a Denver Broncos helmet. If you look closely, you can almost literally count all of the Broncos symbols. Um, some of them are a little harder to see in this video than they are up close. So. Uh, you can see practically the wood grain in the cabinet to his right. And if you look really, really closely, you can see all of his Coke cans. The s bottles of soda here next to the PC, the PC tower, some binders down here, uh, a helmet, 
and a football in a case that's kind of hard to make out, but if you know what it is and you know what you're looking for, you can see it. So um, all of the tiny little details in here down to the reflection on the computer monitor are pretty, pretty incredible. So this is about five inches tall, so it's not a super, super tall with the fan, and it has a ton of detail in it. So this gray silver particular in particular was an amazing choice for doing a lithophane. And just again, take a look at the detail in the wood grain on the cabinets. You can see the shine on the uh, cabinet knobs. It is just incredible quality for a lithophane. So definitely recommend if you're into doing lithophanes, getting a hold of some Kodak PLA because even though I really, really am impressed with the dimensional accuracy and how well the chainmail turned out, and I really, really enjoy the Mandalorian Blaster, this is by far the most beautiful use that I found for this filament. And I hope, Kodak, if you see this, that you enjoy the... Well, I guess it's not really irony, but uh, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, and this one's in 3D, so I should get 2,000 more. And that's basically it for all the testing I've done with this Kodak PLA so far. I have run a few tests on their PETG, and I can tell you I'm pretty pleased with that so far as well. But we'll save that for another video. Basically, how does it all shake out? Well, uh, from the very first print that I started with this filament, I have had nothing but a pleasurable experience. It goes down smooth as butter, and the models all tend to come out really, really nice. That... Uh, blaster that I printed I was worried that I might have to tweak a couple of settings and go back and reprint another but it came out perfectly the first time so uh, everything I've done from rafts to tree supports as far as adhesion and support structures go uh, has come out supremely well and the interfacing of the support skin has actually been really nice as well so uh, five out of five for the Kodak PLA highly recommend you try some if you can get your hands on it i will put a couple of links down below we will do one to kodak and their website and we will do another one that is an affiliate link to get some on amazon and you can decide what you like best i guess for your purchasing method but i'm telling you right now you're definitely going to want to give this stuff a shot uh kodak will tell you generally they make this for industrial grade applications so not really for hobby printers but it is a 175 millimeter filament and it does come in a standard size spool and these spools behind me are not actually a full kilo they are um, 0.75 kilos so 750 grams and that is not bad the price is pretty fair so you're gonna get great quality uh, and I think you will be very pleased with anything you happen to print with their filament so as far as the PLA goes definitely a buy Check it out if you get the chance. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. Share it around in all your social circles. And smash that subscribe button because we have a lot more reviews coming at you. Before we wrap up this video, I just wanted to say that Kodak did not in any way endorse this video. They did not pay me to say this. Uh, they did send me the filament free of charge to try on the condition that I review them on my channel and give them an honest review. And all opinions in this review have been my opinion. So there's that for you. I just wanted everybody to be aware. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.